Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Take your seats, your position as we proceed to begin this service of this day. I invite you to stand up and direct your attention to your program. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. We live to the living of the living of the living of So then, whether we live or we die, we do not live to ourselves. For this time, Christ died and lived again so that we might be Lord of both the dead and the living. May the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. His great mercy by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance, the birth in heaven, which nothing can destroy. The Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her, her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather down the snakes and carry them in the distance. We will not have you in your brothers and sisters and those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Christ Jesus died and rose again, even so, Jesus Christ, God will bring with him those who have died. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to set us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We remain standing as we sing the opening hymn, have we been to Jesus for the cleansing of God? Oh, 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 oh,
standing let us pray the question is God is this are we washed in your blood do we know you that's the question have we met you in a personal way gracious father we have entered into this place to seek your strength and upliftment to ask you, God, to remain with us in this time of sorrow. As we celebrate the life of our dear brother, may we look to you for all things. May we turn to you as our guide and comforter, our helper. May we ask you all the questions that are dancing around in our thoughts right now of why. So we invite your presence in this place, God, to speak to us and to bring comfort, to lead our thoughts and to, and to help us to understand the reality of death. Be with the family, O oh Lord, and continue to journey with us, your people, we pray. Through your son, Jesus the Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Be seated, friends. We continue with the service, with the service with our tributes. And the first tribute will be done by Pamela Cunningham, Jolene Longman, Nicole Longman, Walters, and we will continue in that order. <laughs> Pamela Cunningham, is she here? If Pamela is not here, we will continue with... Oh, okay. Thank you. 
tribute to Q. Q, we didn't say how much we love you as often as we should. We often take each other for granted, not realizing that the life we have can be ended suddenly. The Lord God has given us this precious life for a time. But when he says, my child, it's time to come home, we have no control, no choice. We know not the day or the time. My cousin, you left your precious little daughter who wandered and with tears in her eyes and asked, why did daddy have to die? They loved each other very much. But when she gets older, she will understand that we all have to die. Q, you are gone too soon, too suddenly. Wasn't able to say goodbye to your loved ones, but only God knows the answer. You are gone to a better place, so rest in peace, mm -hmm. my cousin. Pleasant morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord says that we should give thanks in everything. Ah. Uh, When I'm alone in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up, for I want to go higher in Him. And the Lord took me there. Let me start over. It's not easy, but God must get the glory this morning because we serve a big, mighty God. And uh, I'm just going to encourage us that are here this morning. We don't know, as my cousin said, we don't know when the Lord will call us home. But as our eyes are still open to see, let us try to live a life that is elected sure. Let us try to make the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior because we don't know when we're going to have to say goodbye. Sometimes we don't even get the chance to say goodbye. But God is able. He's able to sustain us and he's able to keep us. Hallelujah. When I'm alone in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up, for I want to go higher in thee. But the Lord knows I can't live on the mountain. So we picked out a valley for me. Jesus lived beside still water, still waters. It was somewhere in the valley below. In the valley below, and he drew me, yes, I had to be tested, tested and tried. But in the valley, he restored my soul. Oh. It is dark, 
darkest the dungeon and the sun seldom shine. And I question, Lord, why must this be? Then he told me the strength in those sorrows and that they are victories in his triumph for me. My Jesus leads me on beside still waters still waters it was somewhere in the valley below the valley below and he drew me yes I to be tested tested a tribe but in the valley he restored my soul. It was dark, dark as the dungeon, where the sun seldom shine. And I question, Lord, why must this be? And he told me there's joy, joy in my sorrows, and that they are victories in his trial for me. My Jesus leads me home beside still water. Still waters, it was somewhere in the valley below, in the valley below, and it drew me aside to be tested, tested and tried, but in the valley. He restored my soul. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, let us seek to live a life. Let us do a range check on the life that we are living so that when this day come for all of us, it would have been worthwhile living let us not live a life that when our number calls that our life would have been in vain there is only one way to get it right and it's to confess the lord as your lord and savior ask him into your life and ask him to help you to make it home bless the lord Is Pamela Cunningham here? Okay, all right. We will continue with our offer him. Great is thy faithfulness. As we invite the ushers to come forward, please. <laughs> Shadow, 
us go to God in prayer. Mighty God, holy, eternal, and loving Father, we want to thank you for waking up this morning to a new day. We want to thank you for the gift of life. Regardless of the situation here today, Lord, let your presence continue to be felt among us, Lord. And at this time, we present our offering upon to you, mighty God. Multiply it and bless it that it will continue to do your work here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the eulogy from Brother Errol Cunningham and Brother Basil Langwan.
Morning Church. Eulogy of Q. Love lives on. Those who remain with us for love itself lives on. And cherished memories never fade because our loved one is gone. Determined Basic School, Granville Allied School, and Marlon High School. He also learned mechanic and painting in the construction field. He loved and attended church and camps regularly. He also got certificate from for attendance. He was also an active person his community always ready to help. He was the father of a beautiful little girl, Jamelia, of what they call, who usually excited, excited him, always get excited when they hear his voice. He was also a fun loving person who made people laugh. Q claimed to be top chef, always competing with his mother and siblings. But as it turned out, he was no chef at all. He nearly burned down the kitchen. And guess what? His concoctions were tasteless. He always have his whole recipes with all different things combined. He was really a good and humble person who will be missed, especially by his parents, his sister, and brothers, his precious little daughter, Cushy, and his loving girlfriend, Tash. Also, he will be sadly missed by aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, and others. Jerome, AKA Q, gone too soon but won't be forgotten, God knows best. So take your rest in peace. When Tomorrow Starts Without Me by David M. Romano. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, here, there's no longing for the past. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we are far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Longman. Um... Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Ezekiel chapter 18, reading from verse 30 through to verse 32, and Julie and Langman will read for us. Ezekiel 18. Verses 30 to 32. Therefore, you Israelites, I will judge each of you according to your own ways, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Um, 
I'm still holding on to everything that's dead and gone. I don't want to say goodbye, because this one means forever. Now you're in the stars and six feet never fell so far. Here I am alone between the heavens and the embers. Oh, it hurts so hard for a million different reasons. You took the best of my heart and left the rest in pieces. For I'm still holding, 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 oh. Oh, I'm still holding on to everything that's dead and gone. I don't want to say goodbye because this one meets forever. Now you're in the stars and six feet never fell so far. Here I am alone between the heavens and the embers. Oh, oh, oh it hurts so hard for a million different reasons. He took the best of my heart. He's killed. I read for us from Psalm 107, verse 13 and 14. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next item on our program, it was a typing error there. So it is not the Lord's my shepherd. It is actually blessed assurance. So we'll stand, blend our voices and sing gracefully. And after that song, the next voice you will hear will be from Reverend O'Kay Brown to give us today's message. Let's all stand, please. Blessed assurance in the Thank you. 
Seated, please. Let us pray. Grant now, God, your word to our hearts. May we listen, may we consider, and may we apply it to our lives. Through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading from Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 30 to 32, calls us to one thing. Repent and live. Repent and live. My brothers, sisters, and friends, we have come to this place with mixed feelings and uncertain mindsets. For some of us, the reality of death has not come to our attention yet. And for others, the certainty of death has made us weak. We, we are trembling within ourselves, frightened, sad, broken, wondering what next. But in the midst of all of this, the prophet Ezekiel wants us to consider something very important. Repent, he said, and you shall live. Listen to the reading again, read so beautifully for us earlier. Therefore, you Israelites, I will judge each of you according to your own ways declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent. Turn away from all your offenses. Then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. Notice how the reading began. It began with the word, therefore. Which suggests that what came before needs our full attention. You see, friends, the, the Israelites to whom this chapter was addressed were using a false proverb to justify themselves or to make themselves look good. They said in verse 2 of this same chapter, 
they said in verse 2, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children teeth are set on the edge. They were trying to overlook the fact that they were even worse than their ancestors. They were trying to lay the blame for their mistakes on the shoulders of their ancestors. And when God saw what they were trying to do, God had to bring them down to reality and make them understand that he would judge every man on the basis of his individual and personal conduct. The point the prophet is making is this. No one will live life as they please and God does not do something about it. So he says, repent and you shall live. So in verses 30 to 32 now, we are confronted with the call to repentance. And if we repent, the prophet is saying, we are promised life eternal. You see, when you look at these verses in Ezekiel 18, you realize that the prophet is delivering this message to the people from the Lord. So the Lord is speaking to them. The Lord is not too happy with how they have been living their lives. And in God speaking through the prophet to them, God said to them, you need to embrace or to seek a new heart and a new spirit. Why is it important to seek a new heart and a new spirit? It is important to do so because when we have a new heart and a new spirit, we are governed by God through the Holy Spirit. We are led by God through the Holy Spirit. And our lives will be governed in the way that God requires of us to live our lives. So the prophet is saying to us today, Look carefully at how we are living our lives. Turn to God and repent and God will forgive and give us a new heart. So, so when you look at the, 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 the reading there, God says that he will judge each person according to their ways. This underscores the principle of personal responsibility before God. So we cannot rely on the, the righteousness of others or hide behind the actions of our ancestors. Each of us is accountable for our own conduct and it is our own hearts and spirits that require a change under the Holy Spirit of God. So repentance, friends, is not merely a, a, an on-the-surface act of sorrow or regret. But repentance is a deep and genuine turning away from our wrongful actions. It, it involves a, a conscious decision to rid ourselves of all the offenses and seek a new heart under God Almighty. And this change is not something we can achieve on our own. This change of a new heart and a new spirit require the hands of God 
to be upon us. So as we repent, what do we do? We open up ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit who can renew and cleanse us from within. So among the calls to repentance, if you notice the reading, you'd realize that the Lord God offers an intense promise if we repent. Notice what he says. If we repent, we shall live life abundantly with God. And this is a message of hope and a message of restoration. God takes no pleasure in the death of anyone. He desire, his desire is for all of us to turn around and seek his face. And when we seek his face, we will begin to understand the fullness of life and the life that God requires of us to live. So the promise of life that God promised here in Ezekiel 13 is not really the promise of physical life only, but it includes life in heaven, life beyond this one. So the point the prophet is making is that when we repent and turn to God, we are granted the gift of a new life, a life marked by forgiveness, a life marked by reconciliation, and a life marked by the Spirit of God. And when we are marked by that Spirit we call the Holy Spirit, who is God among us, when we are marked by the Holy Spirit, when we walk, we will begin to see the difference in us. So what should we take away from this reading then this morning or this afternoon? Take away this. As we think about these verses, we are called to look at ourselves, to look at our heart to look at our mind, to look at our lives. And as we look at our lives, there's a question we need to ask ourselves. Are there areas of sin and offenses that we need to turn away from? That's a question we are, being, we are encouraged to ask ourselves. But then there's another question we need to ask and ask ourselves and consider. Have we allowed patterns of disobedience to separate us from God's intended purpose for our lives. The call to repentance is not a one-time thing, but it is an ongoing journey of surrender and change under God. So what the prophet is saying to us here today, brothers and sisters, the prophet is giving us an in invitation. We are invited to approach God with humility, recognizing our need for his forgiveness and his grace. So my encouragement to us today is this. Let us not delay in responding to the call of God to repent. Because the thing is, God stands ready to receive every one of us inside this place. And once we are ready to turn to God, God will be there to receive us with open and loving arms. So my brothers and sisters, the message from Ezekiel 18 verses 30 to 32 echoes a very timeless relevance. It is a call to personal responsibility, a call to repentance, and a call to embrace the promises of life that comes from walking in obedience with God. 
So may we heed the call. May we answer the call with open hearts and willing spirits, knowing that in repentance, we find the pathway to true and abundant life. Abundant life. We are not going to live abundant life in the here and the now. Abundant life comes after this life. And for us to have that abundant life, it begins with repentance, it begins with us giving ourselves to God, and it begins with us walking with God in a faithful and courageous way to the very end of our lives. So take the call. Take the call from the prophet to live a life of repentance and live. Amen. I invite the family members to stand at this point. I'm going to invite Brother Louis Lewis to pray for the family. All the family members, if you're on the outside, I invite you just to come closer so we can pray for you. All the family members, please stand at this point for prayer. Let's look to God in prayer. Thank you, Almighty God, for having died on the cross so that you can bring comfort to a grieving nation, a grieving people, a grieving family. Loving Lord, we pause in your presence this afternoon to thank you and to lift your name high because we know who you are. And because we know who you are, Lord, we place the Longman's family in your hand another time. Thank you, Lord, for having died and having taken away our sins and having given us the opportunity, Lord, to live for you here on earth and so that we will live with you when you shall come or you shall take us home. Q has brought a void in the family. But, oh God, we know how powerful and great you are. You can fix and close that void. That void, Lord, you know exactly how to close it. We pray, Almighty God, that you will pull the family together. We pray, Almighty God, that you will continue to lead the family those members, Lord, who have not yet surrendered themselves to you, we pray, Almighty God, that you will pull them under your wings. Continue to supply their needs, Lord. I want to pray especially, Lord, for her daughter. Hover around her. Comfort her. Bring peace to her. As she realizes, Lord, that dad is away. But you, oh God, is the greatest of all dads. And you are willing to take her into your hands. Mommy and daddy, Lord, they are grieving. They are hurting. Brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, they are grieving. They are hurting. But you know why, Lord? And I pray, Lord, that you will inspire them. I pray, Lord, that you will work through them. Because greater is he, the one that you live in, O oh God. We want to place them another time in your hands, Lord. Give them strength. Give them comfort, Lord. Help them to love each other and Huddle to each other in these difficult times. As they realize, Lord, that this is the final lap of Q in their visual eyes. Let them see themselves, Lord. Let them see themselves as short when it comes to you. And make themselves ready and waiting 
to jump into your arms, Lord, so that you can prepare that special place for them when they shall leave this earth. Bring comfort and sustenance and hope to them. For we ask it in holy name's sake. Amen. Amen. I invite the rest of the congregation to stand with the family at this time as we pray. I invite you to direct, direct your attention to your program as we share in the liturgical prayers. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they will dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, you give the faith that overcomes the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in the hope of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, you make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. Look in tender mercy on your people in their loss. Enable them to find in you their refuge, despair and doubt of your love. Comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with their strong love. Help them to face the future without fear or knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands. And that nothing in life, not even death itself, can separate any one of us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commend Jerome Longman to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power, you gave us life. And in your love, you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Jerome to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. My friends, you may be seated for a little while. I share with you these instructions on how we will proceed, well, recess from the sanctuary and how we'll proceed to the family plot. The ministers will lead the recession from the church. Behind the ministers will be the casket, Paul bearers. Behind the casket and Paul bearers will be the family members and behind the family members will be the rest of the congregation. We proceed to Bethlehem for burial in this manner. The minister will be in front of the hearse, behind the hearse, family members, and behind the family members, the rest of the well-wishers. Well we begin the recession on the singing of the fourth stanza of the hymn. The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. I'll begin the, the recession on the fourth stanza of the hymn. So I invite the pallbearers to come and stand beside the casket as the undertakers arrange it in the, in the right way. So invite the pallbearers to come and stand beside the casket. Congregation, I invite you to stand. <laughs>
redeemer, yes, he lives. He lives. He lives within my heart. Yes, holy God, restore again. And me to all God made within the path of righteousness and for his own sake. He lives, he lives, he lives. My God and my Redeemer, yes, he lives. Yet though I walk in that star bell, yet will I bear no will. For thou art with me as I rock and staff me my foot he lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives. He lives, he lives within my heart. He 